Dear beloved Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, Sunday and opportunity to worship you with other uh, sisters and brothers in faith. Thank you for allowing us to be able to sing songs of praises and for able to allow us to turn our eyes to you. We thank you for this opportunity. Dear Lord, we have just read this Bible passage and we'll have the opportunity to learn a, a word of life from you from it. Dear Lord, please uh, allow this message to be expressed in a way that we can clearly understand. As is notated in today's passage, we often tend to worry about things. But Lord, we, I, we need to realize that you are helping us and that you will provide for us. And that when we're thinking about our future, we don't need to be so worried. Lord, please strengthen our faith. Lord, we have great expectations of you. And allow us to be able to truly believe in you without doubt. Please allow a message to come uh, uh, straight through to our hearts today. Please watch over Pastor Anjiki as he gives his message this morning. and allow blessings to be uh, upon him and everyone here today. We have great expectations, Lord. Pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. There's many people from various countries here today, aren't there? <laughs> It's wonderful to have such a great uh, worship experience. In Japan, We'll be having the cherry blossom season soon, and likely in this week, uh, their cherry blossoms will begin uh, blooming here in Utsunomiya as well. In the um, spring season will be coming up, so people will likely be going outside uh, more often than they have. And have you heard birds uh, singing recently? You've probably noticed that, oh, yeah, some birds are like singing outside, but maybe haven't really paid attention to it. Uh, people sometimes do bird watching, or some people actually uh, study how birds sing. And they uh, do a very deep uh, type of uh, study on these different types of bird calls. There are some people who have uh, realized that there are different types of bird calls. One type is uh, called a territory song, and it's a song in which the birds are expressing what their territory is. In the Japanese uh, <laughs> this is a Japanese uh, translation, like, this is my territory, don't come near me, <laughs> type of thing. And so it's just uh, birds declaring um, their specific territory uh, that they have. Another type of song the birds have is a love song, and uh, singing from the male to the female and the female to the male bird. So there's also love songs, apparently. Another type of bird song is a teaching song where the parent birds teach uh, something to their uh, chicks. The person who is, uh, was studying this um, also discovered a different kind of song that doesn't fit into these three types. And for a long time, they didn't realize what this song was. But once they become a Christian, they figured it out. It was a praise song. <laughs> they, uh, this person has discovered that birds sing praise songs uh, to God. The birds know that God has made them, and they want to sing songs of praise uh, to Him to express their gratitude. If birds uh, stop singing, then they won't be able to uh, go on living. And that's the same for um, people, too. We have to sing praise songs, and that's what we've been doing uh, here just this morning. When we are able to sing songs of praise to God, that shows that our souls are truly in a healthy state. If we are not able to sing songs of uh, praise to God, that may indicate that there's a problem with our soul. And so it's, it's just a... form of proof that we are in a healthy state spiritually. In today's passage, it's talking about Jesus Christ, and he's talking about here about the ravens. And he's also talking about uh, lilies of the valley as well. He's also talking about how uh, there is worry in our lives and what we are to do about resolving that. Last Uh, week, in which is the passage uh, that we just read 
uh, right before the one we read today, it was talking about a, a foolish rich man and how his heart was uh, just full of uh, this greed. And that's why uh, Jesus referred to him as being foolish because somebody who is rich, uh, this person who is rich didn't realize uh, what the true uh, status was and that he would, everything would be expected of him. Let's look at verse 22. It says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. In Japanese Bibles, it says, therefore, and it's kind of a um, weak statement in the Japanese language. However, if you look in the original text, um, it's a much stronger meaning uh, for that word, therefore. In other words, the person, um, sorry, if somebody forgets where their life is truly coming from, truly from, coming from God, and they base their life all around the possessions and uh, things they're able to physically see, then that will uh, cause a great distress in their lives. That's why here uh, Jesus says, therefore, and that's in respect to the passage before this. Worry is a topic of today, and the um, true meaning of worry is how your heart is like separated into different areas and it's worrying about just different things so um, it means you cannot concentrate because you're um, not able to focus one person said once that worry is misusing your imagination and that's really true if you think about it because if you're thinking about all the bad things that could possibly happen in your future then that's what takes over your mind and people who um, are just always worried are just misusing their imagination uh, it's like maybe perhaps today some of you uh, are often worried or concerned about things so if that's the um, case please uh, listen carefully what I have to say today in today's passage and Jesus is saying to not worry about your life and this is not just advice he's saying it's, it's like it's a command to do not worry even if you do worry, nothing will really change. Uh, just recently, maybe it was last week, I think, uh, in Oktoma area, there was a person who got, uh, sorry, about 12 people got lost up in the mountains there. He's <laughs> in Japanese play of words, so I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, they were um, able to rescue these people, thankfully, by a rescue uh, group. And um, there was another um, time when other people were lost in the mountains, and uh, these people were, uh, uh, family members of the people who were lost were asking for help to find their family members. And the rescue people said, there's, there's plan A, plan B, and plan C uh, to rescue your family members, so which do you want? And so they said, uh, plan A is to send in a helicopter and to look, search for your family, but it's a very expensive method. Um, plan B was the option of having people go in from the land and uh, search for your family members. But, of course, that would be expensive, too. And there's uh, Plan C, and this is a free plan. And so the family was very interested in what would be free. And he, and they asked, well, what is Plan C? And he said, uh, Plan C is you just stand here with us, and we'll just stand here and worry with you. <laughs> Even if you just sat there and worried about things, nothing would happen, Right. So what we're saying here is that uh, to worry doesn't lead to anything productive, and it won't lead to a resolution of whatever your problem is. It will actually uh, lead you to sacrifice your health and your joy and other things that you would have otherly had. It won't lead to anything advantageous. That's why Jesus said and gave the command to do not worry. And he explains the reason why you do not have to worry. There's actually several. The first reason he gives is that our God that we believe in knows what we need, and he has prepared that which, what, which we need. Let's look at verse uh, 22, second half, and it says, uh, Do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, or what you wear. For life is more than food, and body more than clothes. So for you, you uh, obviously realize you are alive, but where did you get your life from? Where did you come from? Did you get yourself in a bargain sale? <laughs> I don't think that's the answer. It's Your life is from God, and through your parents, it was given to you. So your life is actually a present from God, and that's true of your body as well. 
the God that has given you your life and your body also is very aware of what needs you have and what needs are uh, necessary for you for uh, eating and wearing and so on. And so that's why Jesus says we are to believe in that God who knows what we need. In uh, verse 25, Jesus says, Who of you by worrying can add a single hour of uh, hour to your life? And if you actually worry, your life will get shorter. <laughs> it won't get longer, that's for sure. And Jesus says in uh, verses 24 and 27, uh, he's talking about um, actually the ravens and the wildflowers here. The you, Jewish people who were originally listened to him say this knew exactly just who uh, ra- or what ravens were. In Leviticus, in the Old Testament, it spoke of uh, dirty and uh, clean and unclean animals and how they weren't supposed to eat these unclean animals. In this list, uh, ravens were included. Jesus uh, often refers to uh, sparrows and how uh, people are so much more valuable than sparrows. But for uh, Jewish people, they uh, realized how uh, sparrows were of high vower, higher, higher value than ravens because they'd actually be eaten. So when they see a sparrow flying in the sky, they think, oh, yakitori. <laughs> but it, if they saw ravens, they would uh, think, oh, this is something you know totally uh, irrelevant to their life. So God was able to tell um, tell these people through this passage that even birds who they would ordinarily just bypass and ignore, even those um, have uh, a purpose. And so these types of birds and flowers um, do not worry about their lives, but God takes care of all of them. Also, when uh, he's talking about the wildflowers here and referring to Solomon, it's an example. And the example of Solomon is actually referring to uh, him who is the old uh, king, uh, son of David in the old days. In Israel, he was uh, the one who was the most uh, of high power. So he had the knowledge, uh, sorry, knowledge had, uh, sorry, Solomon had very extensive knowledge at that time and wisdom. And in looking at the first Kings uh, 10, 4 through 5, it states about how a per- person who uh, came from now present Ethiopia to come and see this Solomon. She was, uh, she was very rich because she was a queen, and she was the most affluent uh, person in all of that area. So when she heard about Solomon, she came to Israel to speak with him. This is a record of that in 1 Kings 10, 4 through 5. When the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon and the palace he had built, the food was on his table, the seating of his officials, the tending servants in their robes, his cupbearers, and the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord, she was overwhelmed. Pretty amazing, isn't it? So this uh, queen of Ethiopia was so impressed of all that Solomon had that she was overwhelmed. So uh, Jesus is comparing here Solomon with these wildflowers and saying that even though Solomon was quite impressive, even greater is uh, that of how uh, or even greater was these wildflowers and their beauty was n- not reflective of any worrying involved. So that's why Jesus is it's telling them to consider ravens and wildflowers, to consider them. He's using the word consider here. And to consider means to observe carefully or to study closely. And by doing so, then you will understand. You know, this isn't something you just glance at and understand, but you really have to uh, observe carefully. In nature, you can really see God's work and God's hand. Nature is just amazing to look at. And you can look at that in uh, the flora flora and flana. There's many people who have uh, studied it to a great extent and have realized just how wonderful nature is. For example... In Canada, some of the natives there, when it came to um, fall, they would be anticipating um, winter. And they would be able to know um, whether it would be a harsh winter and or not. They would know this ahead of time. And the reason why they would know is by because they would observe the squirrels. 
in fall, the they would observe these squirrels and see what they were doing, and they would be able to predict whether the upcoming winter would be either harsh or not. The reason why they were able to do that is that when there would be a harsh winter upcoming, they would notice that these squirrels would uh, can, would gather more um, nuts than usual. And so by the amount of nuts uh, and acorns and so on that they would collect, they would be able to predict how harsh the winter would be. So how did this work? Well, the squirrels didn't probably have a weather forecaster telling them what was going to happen. <laughs> they wouldn't, the weather reporter wouldn't be saying, collect more nuts today. But um, actually, they would have an intrinsic way of knowing exactly whether uh, there would be a harsh winter or not, and that would be unknown to them from gone. In this way, um, humans would watch the squirrels very carefully to know and predict about the winter upcoming. Pretty amazing, isn't it? But what's even more impressive is that these squirrels would con uh, collect many, many nuts during uh, the fall, and then they would, uh, in the winter, dig them up to eat them. However, they would not um, eat all of them. They would, of course, hide each of these nuts, but about half of them would be forgotten and just left in the ground. You would think this is stupid, right? <laughs> but actually, uh, this is wisdom from God because these um, nuts that were left in the ground would um, turn into uh, plants and uh, trees and create more um, f foliage in the future. So in this way, the squirrels were able to help contribute uh, to the future uh, nature and forest in the area. So it's a, a natural recycle system. Even squirrels have amazing knowledge and that they are able to um, collect nuts and purposely forget about them. Who enabled them to do so? God. So uh, people studying these squirrels have noticed that these nuts that have been forgotten in the um, ground have, are in the total of about uh, sorry, then because of this, they are able to pr plant about 13,000 trees a year because uh, of what they are doing for getting the nuts. So these ravens and the wildflowers and even squirrels can be observed carefully to know just what an amazing plan uh, God has for them and how he's able to take care of them uh, so that they don't have to worry. And in the same way, God is saying that we people have even higher value than these uh, things. For that reason, God is definitely looking at each of you. People who can't believe this respond in uh, verse 27. Uh, sorry, and Jesus referred to people who could not understand this by saying, Oh, you of little faith. So, it's referring to people who are not able to accept this as uh, people with little faith. How thick is your faith? If it's just like thin meat you do for shabu shabu and Japanese food, then that's probably uh, not going to get you for. But if you have thick faith like a steak, uh, that will be something to get you through. So anyway, his point here is to have um, has strong faith. So worry is something that's brought up here. Uh, for a reason. The reason is is that it, it indicates uh, that you are lacking uh, faith in God. Uh, faith is something that, it, if when it's small, means you don't trust God much. That leads to worry. Some worry, uh, some Christians sometimes uh, say, try to be humble, and they say the following. They say things like, God, um, please uh, accept my weak faith. But what does God say? God's like, I don't want your weak faith. <laughs> if you say you're weak, then, then declare you want to be strong. God wants us to have a strong faith, and he wants us to strengthen it. So, for example, uh, if a preschool child uh, is uh, sad about something, then the father will come up and say, you know, what's wrong? And so the little kid will probably say, oh, Dad, I 
I will probably grow up and go to elementary school and junior high school and high school, and I probably will be able to go to uh, university because I'm pretty smart. But I'm kind of worried about my um, university fees. Dad, what do you think? I'm, I'm worried about this every single day, and I, will I be okay? <laughs> if a preschool kid says something like that you, to you, what would you think? <laughs> You'd be like, don't worry, you're still a little kid. Yeah, I've got it all for you. But if the next day they're like um, feeling sad again, and they, they're like, I know what to do about the expenses for um, university, but I'm also worried about how much food I'll be eating, and and I wonder if I'll be able to eat you know, two or three bowls of you know, rice a day or something. I wonder if I'll have enough money for food. Maybe I should just eat less. <laughs> what would you think of a kid saying something like a little kid saying something like that to a father? You <laughs> you're stupid, right? You should say believe, you know, trust your trust your dad. So in the same way, we are not to worry about our future because that's the same thing we're doing to our our father, our God. We're saying, God, we can't trust you. God, we're just worried sick because we don't think you're sufficient. Does this make sense? Worry is sin. And it's not having faith in the God. So the cause of this is not having enough faith in God. That's why he tells us to expand and enlarge our faith. He's talking about ravens and uh, wildflowers and explaining how uh, that we are even uh, greater than these. He also explains. Uh, declares to us that our life is not our own but actually our life belongs to God and so in doing so by worrying we can't extend our life because it isn't something that is ours to decide anyway and and here it's uh, also talking about um, God and how he is uh, the creator and he's not just a great God but he is also our father and he has prepared many, many things for his children, and he is a, a waiting for them to grow up. In the same way, our Heavenly Father is also uh, anticipating what we will need in our future when we do grow up. So he tells us we are not to worry. The last point today is uh, one of, of a person with great faith. I've, ta- I've, I've spoken about him before, but his name is George Mueller. There's his picture on the screen. He was born in Germany, and when he turned 20 years old, he became a Christian. He had a future dream, and that was to uh, be successful in the business world. He went to the UK, and he uh, studied English and also business as well. At 23, he uh, realized uh, at this when he was 23 at this time, that there were many um, homeless children, many orphans in the UK. When he saw them, he was really uh, touched uh, by uh, by a message from God and God telling him to be a father to them. So he uh, realized he was to start an orphanage, but he was 23 years old. And this was a very big shock for him, so he kind of ignored it. However, when he... God uh, really did get through to him. And when he was 31 years old, he made a decision. He made the decision to follow God. And God uh, promised him uh, something from Psalm 81.10. It says, I am the Lord of your God, who brought you up out of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. So if God told you this, how to you, how wide would you open your mouth if God was going to fill it? You would open it as wide as you could, right? You wouldn't just like open it a tiny bit, would you? You would just open it like so much that your jaw would fall apart, right? So anyway, God was saying to him, open your uh, faith, you know, open your uh, ability to have faith as wide as you can and I will fill it. So George uh, Mueller accepted this, and he decided to proceed by faith. He began uh, to uh, um, develop something uh, for orphans. He made a decision that before he would ask anyone for anything, he would always pray to God first, and that he would whatever he received would be coming from God. At this time, he was able 
he had the faith that uh, God would provide, and he actually did an experiment to see if that was true. He he said to himself that if there was any orf- any day any orphan wouldn't without food, then he would consider that uh, this experiment would be uh, a failure. So he did this uh, for 42 years, and he actually uh, took care of 2,050 uh, orphans with 110 staff members and had five facilities. There was once a time when the following happened. They were about to eat lunch, and they were preparing for lunch. However, in the pantry, there was no food left. So the person in charge of food uh, came to George Mueller and said to him, "Um, I'm sorry, but it appears there's uh, not enough, there's not food for lunch. So George Mueller said, it's okay. Uh, When it's time to eat, I'm playing the bring the kids to the room for lunch and we'll eat. And he went to his uh, room of prayer and he uh, prayed to God and he said, God, we don't have enough food. So please open the gates of heaven, the windows of heaven and prepare and so around 1230, a person they didn't even know came up to the uh, entryway and uh, he said that he uh, was in charge of um, a building nearby and he had various agricultural products that he was going to be going into the city to sell. However, along the way, and right in front of this orphanage, his uh, carriage broke down. And so he realized he would not be able to go into the um, city. When he looked off to the side, he realized the orphanage was there, and he thought, oh, maybe they could use it. So he brought all of this food, uh, all this food that was in the uh, carriage to the orphanage instead. And that ended up being not food just for that day, but for several days. And this didn't happen just this one time, but actually many times. And it was amazing timing that God always provided for him. And this happened uh, numerous times in George Miller's life. His uh, faith was not uh, something that was asking just uh, for the bare minimum, but he had the faith to ask God uh, for uh, the full amount, and that always came to pass. Uh, The children didn't even just have like one uh, piece of clothing to wear, but uh, several uh, brand new outfits to wear. Uh, so boys had three suits and girls had five dresses. At that time, these orphan children had actually um, had so many clothes that they were uh, looked up to by normal children for having so many good clothes. They also had uh, refrigerators and washing machines from the U.S. Uh, donated as well. So it wasn't just that they had the bare minimum to get by, but they had more than enough. This was amazing because George Mueller uh, truly did open his mouth wide for God to bless. At the age of 73, George Mueller uh, did uh, gave testimony on all of this that had ex- happened and went all around the world. And this is how he became known, known worldwide. He said that God expects us to trust him and that he can provide much more than we need. And he said that faith is something like a muscle. If you don't work it out, it'll become weak. But if you work it and work it and work it, it'll become stronger, and amazing things will happen. He also, uh, sorry, he uh, died uh, after 92 years. So he said that faith is something that's like a muscle, which is true because muscles uh, really do wear out if you don't use them. So faith, too, is to be something uh, challenged. So you can, you know, people who are have strong muscles are people who really work at it and really work out their muscles. And it's the same for uh, the uh, spiritual uh, aspects of faith. The last point here is about uh, Jesus telling people uh, to uh, seek the kingdom of God. He says, but seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. In Matthew, uh, Jesus explained uh, how we are to seek the kingdom of God, and then uh, everything else will be given as well. So we are not to get the priorities out of order. We are to seek God's kingdoms first, and to his presence, and to be with God, and that is what we are to seek first. So how do we know that God is really with us? Well, it's 
we can know that by getting closer to the heart of Jesus. We have to know who Jesus is. At one time, Jesus said, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Foolish rich people will just uh, claim everything as being their own. My house, my uh, cellar, my food, my whatever. However, Jesus in his life was always giving things. He was giving healing. He was giving food. He was giving uh, life. He was giving peace. And he was even giving his life at the end. So in the same way, we are to uh, to give that which is needed to others that need it. And that is how we can come closer to the heart of Christ. Before God, we are to be um, saving up uh, um, treasures in heaven. And that it can be done by first seeking his kingdom. And we can know that God will provide exactly what we need when we need it. I hope you will keep this in mind and strengthen your faith in your walk with Christ. Now let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful experience to be able to live our life with you. It sure is exciting, and we thank you for it. Dear Lord, we know that you are a good Father, and we uh, thank you for that. Dear Lord, we uh, thank you for your guidance and We trust you because you know exactly what we need and what we will need it and when we will need it. We uh, believe in you, Lord, and we want to be free of worry and free of the worry of sin, as the this worry is sin. Allow us to uh, uh, proceed further in praying in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we'll have a time of prayer and silence. And I'll pray once more. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Today we have announcements, and then we also have a baptism today. So if you're able to stay, please do. We'll do announcements. Um, I'm going to stop interpreting for a moment as I have to go down and do announcement myself.